The countryside in southwestern New Mexico is a serene, beautiful canvas that is about to have a wild masterpiece painted on it. This is moving day, and it is desert bighorn sheep who will be moving. That involves helicopters, net guns, and muggers. Moving day can be traumatic and dangerous for man and sheep. Well, it's kind of a big deal if you're a sheep to get caught in a net. There's a helicopter flying in the pens. They have a, we use a, a technique called the helicopter net gun method. So there's a big net kind of wadded up into a ball that has weights on the four corners. And the net gunner shoots that net out and the net goes around and wraps around the sheep and basically captures it that way. And someone jumps, the other person jumps out of the helicopter, um, blindfolds, hobbles the sheep, takes it out of the net puts it in a sling bag and they get transported underneath the helicopter to this transport site. The arrival at the processing site looks very much like a scene from MASH. Her description might make that capture process sound almost mechanical and predictable, but she and everyone else on this mission knows that is far from the case. These bighorns are in the Red Rock Wildlife Area Captive Breeding Facility. But captive doesn't mean tame or slow. That means the choppers carrying a pilot, shooter, and mugger wind up doing some acrobatic, some might say crazy, maneuvers to get a clear shot. Oh yeah, no, this is without the doubt one of the most dangerous professions in the world. And uh, <clears throat> you have to be so low on the ground and you have to be looking for things coming up and you can't fire the net into the helicopter rotor or the tail rotor. And, once the animal's been netted or partially netted, the mugger has to jump out and get drugged through rocks and cactus and, and picked up, and it's a, it's a pretty high adrenaline lifestyle. Each of the pastures at Red Rock is two and a half square miles, so the sheep have some room to roam, which means they also have room to run from the choppers and those net gunners. This technique requires precision flying, obviously, and exceptional aim and timing with the gun. In slow motion, it looks almost easy. But in real time, from the gunner's viewpoint, it would seem nearly impossible. The net itself has to be packed perfectly for this complex and dangerous capture process to even have a chance. So that's where it's flying out from, and then when they're flying along, boom. Goes the net. Once the sheep are netted, the muggers have to get out of the chopper quickly to get to the animal. Sometimes an adventure in itself. The mugger hobbles the sheep and begins the often baffling job of unraveling that net. The choppers aren't done yet since they are the bundled sheep's transportation to the processing area. Speed is essential. We try to keep our handling times as fast as we can. Um, we're lucky today the temperatures are cool um, so that the sheep don't overheat, which causes a lot of problems. We do everything we can to minimize the stress, and um, we have pretty good success. This is as good a spot as any to mention why this elaborate process is taking place at all. The captured sheep from the Red Rock breeding herd, undergoing medical testing and measurements at the processing point, are headed for new homes in the Caballo, Pelencios, and Ladrone mountain ranges. In each case, they will join existing herds, augmenting the populations, the genetic genetic mix and the gender makeup of those herds. They're getting some, um, some uh, injections of some medications which will help reduce the stress of the capture and they're receiving radio collars so that we can track them once they're released into the wild. Um, we're pulling some blood samples so we can look at some of the diseases they've been exposed to and we're also running genetic profiles on them um, this time to test for genetic diversity. The size and complexity of this operation takes a coordinated effort from several agencies including the Department of Game and Fish, the Bureau of Land Management, the Forest Service, and the New Mexico Foundation for North American Wild Sheep. That's a sportsman's group that offers financial and political support. It also takes a lot of people, and that includes a group of volunteers from New Mexico State University. I had to come out, I tried to bring as many people as I could because it's an awesome experience. And I'm really fortunate that Game and Fish would let us come out here and do this. In addition to the testing and measuring, the crews are placing ear tags and radio collars on sheep to assist in tracking the herds in the wild. The collars are built with a cotton portion that will eventually rot and allow the collar to fall off the animal. But we have a permanent marker on those ram horns by drilling a small hole and dropping a small pit tag that's red with a pit tag recorder. and. We're able to epoxy that in. 
Once the sheep have finished the processing, they head to nearby trailers, joining their counterparts waiting for the long trip to their new home. In the caballos, that meant 18 sheep added to the existing herd. They looked just as good, if a bit more reluctant, coming out of the trailer in the Ladrones. I've seen a lot of bighorn sheep jump out of the horse trailer and I sort of got goosebumps and uh, it was pretty exciting to see those guys run up on the mountain. 